so excited to be finding out more about your journey and your exciting new show coming up soon. It's great to have you here. Welcome to Fox. Home. It's funny that you call it a journey because that's really what it ended up being. We didn't know when we started how long it would take, where we would end up going, what we would find, and in the end, it's a chapter that's one of the richest chapters I've ever experienced. So exciting. And I'd love to start out at the very beginning with you, your own journey, traveling back now um, to the very beginning. What inspired you to pursue a career in broadcast journalism, particularly after you had already become a law professor, an attorney? I'd yes. love to find out more. Sure, I, it was an accident. I didn't really intend to have a television career, but I had advised TV people as part of my law practice. So I was a little bit familiar with what it entailed, but didn't aspire to be on television. Turns out, though, that the law background is really great preparation for being a news person. Um, you're able to digest great amounts of information at any one time, think on your feet, um, be in a way persuasive in your delivery. I never really talked like a lawyer, I look legalese. I always brought things down to a level that I wanted my clients to understand. I wasn't a typical attorney, I guess. I was just a person that had the legal background and information, tried to help people work through their problems or negotiate a deal. And so it was great preparation. But when I moved to New York, I was asked to weigh in on a couple of cases for a local NBC affiliate. There was a reporter on maternity leave. And that opportunity led to me realizing that I could reach a lot of people and help a lot of people. And if I wanted to do this, I had to learn how to do this. So I took steps within New York. I couldn't go to Peoria or Jacksonville or Pittsburgh, right. as you usually do, having to go different places for training. I had to do it all in New York. So that was really challenging. I did it. Yeah, that's amazing. What were some of the other challenges you faced and opportunities along the way? Being a mom of a youngster at the time was hard to career change at that moment. So I worked overnights. I would tuck them in, go to dinner, tuck them in, go work all night long at CBS, anchoring an overnight show for the network, and then get off work at 5 a.m., come home, make them breakfast, walk them to school, and collapse. <laughs> and that was basically my life for two years. That's amazing. Um, you did so many yeah, There's a lot of people that do it, though. Absolutely. If you want to do something, whether it's this or be a lawyer at a top firm or win cases, you have to be unafraid and you have to be willing to work harder than anybody else. And uh, This truly is an example of hard work pays off. Yeah, absolutely. And you worked so incredibly hard throughout your very versatile career. You've been an attorney, you've been a mother, of course. Uh, and also real estate broker, an accountant, mortgage broker, now award-winning broadcast journalist. We're very excited for the show. Um, do you ever foresee yourself going back to those areas as well while still being a broadcast journalist? I keep up with everything. I do all the continuing education to make sure that it's always available to me. But I have to tell you, I had so much fun with this show, and I think it does show through. So many experiences on the road. You know how people joke, I'm going to get an RV and I'm going to crisscross the country and I'm going to see America? That's exactly what I got to do. That's amazing. And I got to let my hair down, rough it, just be me, and learn about some incredible stories of ancestry and history and objects. I know a little about coins now. I'm, I know a little about dinosaurs. I know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. I'm really ahead at cocktail parties now, <laughs> you know, because I can weigh in on a lot of different topics. Was there a particular story that you had the most fun with? Um, I would think one of them was riding a horse with a real cowboy, and the horse wasn't broken. Oh, no. And the horse, I was like, my God, help! And my producer's just like, it looks great, great shot, keep going, keep going. But I made one wrong turn and the horse knew it could go back to the barn and it was taking me there at top speed. That was really scary, I have to say. But I got to live like a cowboy or live like a gator raiser or, oh gosh, I learned how to authenticate autographs of John F. Kennedy. That's amazing. He changed his handwriting four times during his life. So I really picked up a lot of knowledge and met a lot of amazing people, and I bet I'll keep in touch with a lot of them. And it sounds like you get to be a real adventurer throughout this whole journey now. 
there were some fatigues, you know, wearing fatigues. I did start to carry a backpack. I mean, <laughs> it was it was a drop and roll situation because the idea came about and we left to start shooting right away. We knew we had the stories and we had to get out there and get them before anybody else. So you will see some stories that have not been told. And that was very exciting. And on the past, you had previously covered a number of very important current events um, on the national level, international level as well. Is there any particular one that affected you personally? I'm so proud of the ability to have a front seat to history, which is something unique that Fox offered me. I worked at other places, but it happened. I mean, I was in the building on 9-11 in the World Trade Center for another network and, and uh, witnessed that whole experience and was fortunate to be alive at the end. And then to cover a tsunami and see other people of death and destruction and despair is a hard thing to do. Hurricanes, all, all kinds of bad things happen to people. And you're there and you try to get people tarp. Like at the tsunami, I said, please, what the people need right now are tarp. They're, they're going to live this way for a long time. So to be able to reach out to our very generous audience here at Fox on those stories, it's both compelling and compassionate and very, very rewarding. We can make a difference. Papal Conclave was probably a highlight for me, though. When the Pope came to the window and waved, I was there. I got rosaries that he had blessed, that were then blessed by Benedict. I'm not Catholic, but I have rosaries blessed by two Popes oh, as a result of my work. That's amazing. What an amazing gift. Um, and then finally, you know, at Mogul, we really believe in empowering women around the world, sharing information, and all of our media partners like yours. Uh, we would love if you could share your advice on what you think women around the world who want to become broadcast journalists like you, what they should do to become as incredible as you are. If you would allow me, I would give advice that goes beyond being a journalist, but about being a woman and being a happy woman. You have to be unafraid. And one of the organizations I'm very close to, besides the military, because I army wives are heroes, would be dressed for success. And I've worked with a lot of the women and been to a lot of their events. And I tell the women, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, you have to believe to receive. And you have to put it out there and have a dream and just take it inning by inning. You don't have to be the top of the field today, but you have to be in the field. And you just keep showing up, and eventually people say, Ooh, I saw her last week, I saw her this week, she keeps showing up. She must be very good at what she does. And just take every opportunity. I moved my career along by never saying no to an opportunity. No matter how challenging or if I knew how to do it or not, I was always willing to try. And that's what I advise young women, because I believe in women for women, hugely. If you were to ask people, they'd probably tell you that I'm pretty serious about that. I won't get into how men help men and women don't often help women, but we should. There's room for everybody. Absolutely. But I just try to encourage young women to try a field, and if it doesn't feel like a good fit, try something else. Absolutely. No, I'm a huge believer in what you just said as well, um, women helping women, and always saying yes, taking opportunities, taking a leap of faith. Absolutely. One of the jobs that I had when I decided that I wanted to become a broadcaster and learn more about how to make news and do storytelling was for $50 a day out on Long Island at a little station because I kind of didn't do so great at my first, that fill-in job that I had at a local affiliate. They said, you know, hey, it was supposed to be for six months. I lasted two days. They said, thank you so much. We'll give you a call. And I could always have gone back to practice law, but I was moved by the experience. So I... I got a job out on Long Island. I made $50 a day for two years, and I took a hit. But I learned, I, I did a fire one day, a bank robbery the next. And then finally, two years in, uh, a little boy needed a kidney, and nobody wanted to do the story in the newsroom because it was for a friend of the owner of the station. And I said, I'll do it. And it was seen by the national show Extra. And they called and asked me if I wanted to be a national correspondent. So I took the job, and the owner of the station said, you know, my friend's kid got a kidney, and you got an upgrade. Should I negotiate with you to try to keep <laughs> you? And I was like, you know what? You gave me two great years of experience. 
But in the newsroom, I went to everyone and I said, please learn from my experience. Never say no to an assignment. You never know where it's going to take you or who's going to see it. So and that's what happened. 